Hi, I'm Jason from Crop King, and today I'm gonna to show you how to put together a two bucket Beto system. So when you open up your packaging, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to go to is your packing slip. Make sure everything's inside. You'll find your instruction manuals along with that packing slip. You'll also find your pieces of green framing. You'll find a hardware kit for the frame itself. You'll find a plumbing kit for your water service, two pieces of PVC gutter, two Beto buckets, your pump, a digital timer, silicone glue, additional tubing and feed line, which we'll use later, your black reservoir, and inside the black reservoir, your first bag of perlite. We're now ready to begin assembling the frame to the two bucket Beto system. You're gonna to wanna to first start by grabbing two of the 25 inch pieces of tube and two of the 14 inch pieces of tube. A really convenient way to make sure that you have the right pieces of tube is to count the number of holes from one end to the next. So 25 inch pieces will have 25 holes, 14 inch pieces will have 14 holes. Great way to just assure that you've got what you need. We're gonna start by taking our two 14 inch pieces and setting them away from one another, and then taking our 25 inch pieces and setting them on top. The way we wanna align this is to count two holes in from the edge on each side of the 25 inch piece. The bolt will insert down through this hole and then through hole number one on the 14 inch piece. So we're gonna use one of our bolts and a washer. We'll go down through the top. We'll put a washer on the back side of the bolt and then secure hand tight with a nut. We'll then repeat the exact same process on the other side. Bolt and washer, locate hole number two. The bolt will go through hole number two and then through hole number one on the smaller piece. A washer on the back, secure hand tight with a nut. We'll now put the second 25 inch piece in position. We'll now tighten the bolts in the initial frame piece. We'll now attach our legs to our frame. Before we do anything with the legs, we do wanna install the feet. So you'll find the 12 inch piece of steel and you'll notice that at one end, there's a threaded cap. You wanna take one of your threaded feet and you're gonna thread these two together until the foot bottoms out on the leg. And you wanna do that on all four of your legs prior to attaching them to the frame. Once your feet are in place, you can now install the legs. To make this easier on yourself, take your frame and flip it upside down. You'll now set the legs with the feet in the air. I'm gonna take one bolt and one washer. I'm gonna come from the outside, from hole number one into hole number one of the leg, secure with a washer and a nut. I'll then take a second bolt and washer. And again, coming from the outside, I'm gonna locate hole number two, push through the leg, and then through the piece of framing, a washer and a nut. I'm gonna repeat this process for all, all four legs. We're now gonna flip our frame and legs over and we'll tighten down our bolts to secure the legs to the frame. Our next step is to install some of the support members. A little tip that we found to be very helpful is to have a small Sharpie marker. And before actually installing the pieces of framework, count the number of holes that you need in between each piece of framing to ensure that you drop them into the right holes. So for this part, we're actually going to count in four holes. One, two, three, four, and then take one of these pieces of frame, a bolt and a washer, drop down through the frame at hole number four, bring the cross support in place, add a washer, and then a nut to hand tight. And then we'll do the same on the other side. We'll now count over six holes from this piece of cross member to the next piece of cross member. One, two, three, four, five, six a bolt in the washer, another piece of cross bracing, a washer, and a nut to hand tight. And then again on the other side. At this point, we're ready to repeat the exact same process on the other side. Once your four cross members are in place, you can go ahead and tighten up the nut and the bolt. We'll now build the light rack for the two bucket system. We wanna begin by selecting our two 45 inch pieces and our last 25 inch piece. You wanna align hole number one of the 25 inch piece with hole number one of the 45 inch piece. A bolt in the washer, you go through the 25 inch piece, then through the 45 inch piece, you put a washer and then a nut to hand tight. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side with the other piece of 40, uh, 45 inch tube. Hole number one and hole number one. 
Once your two 45 inch pieces are attached to your 25, you can go ahead and tighten down your bolts. Do make sure that you are at right angles at both ends. We'll now att attach our two inch spacers to the opposite end of the 45 inch pieces. Take your two inch spacer, bolt down through, and then you go down through hole number one, a washer on the back, and then a nut to hand tight. You'll repeat this on the other side. Make sure that your spacer points in towards the inside of the frame. We'll now tighten down the bolts to hold the spacers in place. We'll now attach our light rack to our base. So to secure the light rack to the base, you're gonna insert one bolt through the light rack into the frame, secure with a washer and nut. And then you will also insert one bolt down through the cross member and into the spacer that you'll secure with a washer and nut. I'll now tighten the bolts to secure the light rack to the frame. We'll now insert our end caps into our frame. You'll notice that there's a small notch in each of the end caps. This is meant to be in line with the bolt itself so that the end caps will sit flush against your frame. It's always helpful to have a small hammer to make sure they set well in place. Go around and find each end that requires an end cap and now you can put those in place. We're now ready to build our feed plumbing. A few things you should look for to do your feed plumbing is first your submersible pump. You want four reducing tees, four emitters, a greenback valve, four drip stakes, a set of zip ties, a grip clamp, half inch tubing, spaghetti tubing, and feed line tubing. We recommend that you have a sharp pair of scissors or a sharp knife and a tape measure or ruler to help you with this process. We're gonna begin by doing our individual irrigation stake assembly. For this, you're gonna need one of your irrigating stakes, your reducing tee, your emitter, your black feed tube, and your spaghetti tube. We're gonna take our tape measure and we're gonna begin by measuring four three inch sections of black tubing. Next, the directions tell us to measure four pieces of 12 to 16 inch long cuts of spaghetti tubing. I'm gonna split the difference and make them 14 inches long. We'll now assemble the irrigation stake assemblies. We're gonna begin with our reducing T and one of the three inch long pieces that we cut from the black tubing. We wanna make sure that presses on tightly so that the black tubing goes all the way over the barb on the reducing T. Once that's firmly in place, you can then take one of the four emitters, red side down, and insert the red end into the black tube. Again, pressing it to make sure that the barb is completely concealed by the black tubing. Next, a piece of our 14 inch white spaghetti tube. This will be pressed onto the top of the emitter. Once that's secure, you can then take one of the drip stakes. The barbed end will go into the white end of the spaghetti tubing. And your first individual irrigation stake assembly is complete. You'll do this three more times for a total of four of these assemblies. We'll now do our half inch tube assembly. Again, it's gonna require some measuring and cutting. So the first piece we want from the instructions is eight inches long. So let's go ahead and cut that first. Our second piece, we want to have it four inches long. Our final piece is five inches long. We'll now take our pre-cut pieces and assemble the feed tube. We'll begin with our greenback valve and our five inch piece of pre-cut tubing. And we're gonna press the five inch tubing onto one of the ends of the greenback valve. We'll then take one of the drip assemblies that we built earlier, and that'll then be inserted into the free end of the five inch piece. Again, pushing all the way up to the feed tubing. Once that's in place, the four inch piece and another drip emitter. Finally, we'll take our eight inch piece 
and secure it at the ends. Once your first two drip emitters are attached, you'll want to cut another piece of four inch tubing. With that piece cut, you're ready to attach your last two drip emitters. Take your third drip emitter and insert it into the eight inch piece of half inch tubing. Then take the four inch piece we just cut, attach to the drip emitter. Lastly, the final drip emitter will fit into the four inch piece and the remaining section of half inch tubing will go on the end of your final drip emitter. For our last step in attaching the feed tubing, we wanna add our pump. So when you open the box to your pump, you'll find a brand new pump inside. Remove the contents of the box and remove the pump from the plastic. You wanna locate the one that's appropriate for the half inch tubing. You'll notice that it's threaded at the bottom and there's threading at the top of your pump. Thread the two together. To make the union, you'll take your snap grip clamp and slide it over your half inch tubing on the long piece of extra tubing that we applied last to our drip assembly. Your half inch piece of tubing will now fit over the barb on the pump. The snap grip clamp will slide down so that it's flush against the pump and you can now close this tightly. Continue to press until you no longer hear snapping. At this point, your feed plumbing is complete. Once you've submerged your pump and you're ready to begin moving water through your system, make sure first you ensure that your greenback valve has been turned to the off position. Next, we'll do our drain assembly. These are the items that you're gonna to need to be able to complete that. A T-junction, two end caps, a bushing, a ram connector, two sections of drain line, the provided silicone, and optional tape. To use your silicone caulk, the best thing to do is unscrew the top. You'll notice there's a safety seal there that needs to be punctured. If you reverse the cap, you'll notice that there's actually a prong inside the cap that can be used to puncture that seal. Press down hard and your cap is now open. Set that aside and find the end piece that attaches to allow you to choose how much caulk comes out at a time. When you're ready to remove the tip, use your scissors and cut off a section that's the correct amount for you. It's always better to start with not enough than have too much. You can always cut off more if you need to. We're now ready to glue our sections of drain line together. We're going to begin by taking one of the sections of drain line and applying a steady bead of silicon caulk to the outside of the drain line. I'll set that aside and now do the same thing on the interior of one of my end caps. Once you have a nice bead of caulk on the inside, you can push these two pieces together firmly and set aside. You repeat the same process with the second piece of tubing. We'll now connect our T to our two pieces of drain line. Again, we'll put a steady bead of caulk on the inside of each of the two ends of the T. We'll now apply a bead of caulk to one of the two pieces of drain line. Now we're ready to push our T onto our drain line. This next step's important. You wanna make sure that the T faces down with this step and the open channel to your drain line faces up. You'll now repeat that step with the second piece of drain line. Again, ensure that your open valley is pointing up and that the T points down. Our final connection is to glue the bushing into the lower portion of the T. We'll apply a bead of silicon to the bushing and then to the inside of the T. And we can now press these two pieces together. Our final step is to attach the ram connector to the bushing. It's an optional step, but we recommend taking Teflon tape and wrapping the threads of your ram connector. It does help prevent leaks and can create a better bond between the threads and the interior of the bushing. It's recommended that when screwing these two pieces together, you only use hand strength and not use tools. Because they're both plastic, you can strip and crack the threading. If you feel like it's not secure enough hand tight, it is okay to use light pressure with a tool. And at this stage, your drain assembly is complete. We'll now build and place our elbows in the bottom of our Beto bucket. So grab your bag that says Beto bucket elbows. You'll remove two from the package. So take your two pieces, push them firmly together, come over to your Beto bucket. The wider of the two pieces is gonna fit over the notch in the bottom of the bucket. Once that's over top the notch, you can then push the top stem down through the hole of the bucket to complete your elbow. 
So take your drain assembly, place it onto the frame. You'll then take your beta buckets, noticing that there's a small protrusion coming out of the bottom of the bucket that is going to sit in the open top of your drain line. This small opening should fit into the drain line so that the bucket will sit firmly on your frame. We'll repeat that again with our second bucket. We'll now attach our feed assembly to our frame. When aligning this, you wanna make sure that your drip emitters are centered by the bucket. You'll then take one of your zip ties through the frame and attach firmly. We'll do the same thing again with the second bucket. You can now go back and add zip ties to firm up the feed assembly. And that's how we put together a two Beto bucket system. If you have questions or concerns or at any time during the process you need Crop King's help, please feel free to reach out to us at any time through phone or email. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy your new unit.